What if I told you, you're not fully human, that deep inside your blood lives a species we thought was long extinct, around 50,000 years ago, your ancestors didn't just fight Neanderthals, they slept with them. A species that vanished from the earth, but not from you, they were stronger, wilder, and yet, their blood is still inside you, they didn't just survive the ice age, they survived in you. You might not believe it, but it's true. You carry their DNA. Some of you want proof. Well, this isn't myth, it's science. In this video, we'll uncover whether you're one of them and explore the real reason why Neanderthals vanished. And we didn't. And trust me, it's going to change how you see yourself forever. Welcome to Histovanes. Subscribe for more real-life history experiences. Before we dive deeper into what really happened between us and them, let's go back, way back, and ask one question. Who were the Neanderthals? They weren't monsters. They weren't cavemen in cartoons dragging clubs. They were human, just a different kind. They appeared over 400,000 years ago, long before we walked the earth. And for thousands of years, they ruled Ice Age Europe and parts of Asia. They hunted, made tools, wore clothes, buried their dead, and even cared for the sick. But they didn't look like us. Neanderthals had broad noses, huge chests, and powerful limbs built for cold climates. Their bodies were shorter, stronger, more muscular, a natural armor against freezing winds. They had heavy brows, deep-set eyes, and wide faces, not ugly, just different survivors. A typical Neanderthal man stood about 5 foot 5 but weighed nearly 200 pounds of solid strength. Their grip strength was stronger than any modern athlete, and their brains, even bigger than ours, though shaped differently. They weren't dumb, they just thought differently. Neanderthals were expert hunters. They worked in groups to take down mammoths and bison. They crafted stone blades, wore animal skins, and even decorated themselves with feathers, shells, and claws. They weren't just surviving, they were living. And for over 300,000 years, they were the masters of their world. But then, something changed. A new species arrived, us, Homo sapiens. We didn't look like them. We were taller, leaner, with lighter bones and sharper chins. We came from Africa, with new tools, languages, fire rituals, and art. And when our two species finally met, we didn't just fight, we shared stories, we shared warmth, and sometimes we shared beds. That's when history changed forever. We thought Neanderthals disappeared, but they didn't vanish. They became part of us. At first, scientists believed we wiped them out that Neanderthals were simply too primitive to survive, but modern science has shattered that story. Because you, yes you, may carry the DNA of a Neanderthal. In 2010, a groundbreaking discovery shook the scientific world. Researchers sequenced Neanderthal DNA and compared it to ours. The result? Nearly every person outside of Africa carries between 1 to 4% Neanderthal DNA. Let that sink in. If your ancestors came from Europe, Asia, or even the Middle East, you're part Neanderthal. And that DNA isn't just sitting there quietly, it's doing things, real things. It affects your skin tone, hair color, even your immune system. It's linked to how deeply you sleep, how you react to pain, and how your body stores fat in the winter. Neanderthals had the same blood types as we do, A, B, A, B, and O. In fact, a Neanderthal woman found in Siberia's Denisova cave had type A blood. Another in Croatia had type B. And guess what? They also had an ultra-rare blood type called rhesus plus incomplete, something scientists once thought only existed in tiny tribes in Australia and Papua New Guinea. It turns out they had it first. But these genetic connections raise a bigger question. How? How did their DNA get inside us? Simple, we mated with them. And not just once. This wasn't a rare accident. It happened often enough that their bloodline didn't die. It merged with ours. But it wasn't always easy. These unions came with risks. Mismatched blood types often caused fatal reactions in babies. One in five pregnancies between the species could end in tragedy. Neanderthal mothers had to feed massive, fast-growing babies, requiring insane amounts of protein and calories to make enough milk. This high cost of motherhood may have limited their survival. Still, some children made it, and when they did, they carried something new, something powerful, the strength of both worlds. And that strength still echoes in your bones. Now imagine this, a world of mist-covered forests, cold wind biting through the trees. The earth is raw, wild, 
and two humans, from different species, meet for the first time. She is a Neanderthal woman, her body is short and muscular, built like stone carved by survival. Her skin is pale but tanned around the neck and arms. Her eyes, large, alert, intelligent, always scanning the dark for danger. Her hair is thick, brown and tied with leather strands. Around her wrist, a bracelet made from eagle talons. He's a homo sapiens man, taller, leaner, wrapped in fur. He carries a spear but his grip loosens when he sees her. His skin is darker, his features softer, he is cautious but curious. They watch each other in silence, no shared language, but their eyes speak. Their breath clouds the same cold air. They step closer, slowly. He offers fire, she offers warmth. That night, they sit together beside the flames. She tears meat from a cooked rabbit and offers him half. He carves a spiral into a bone and leaves it at her feet. Gifts exchanged, not for survival, but for connection. And sometime that night, two ancient bloodlines intertwine. Not out of lust, but out of loneliness, curiosity, maybe even something like love. From that union, a child may have been born, a mix of old and new, primitive and modern, a bridge between species. And maybe that child is one of your ancestors, because we didn't just fight Neanderthals, we lived with them, learned from them, and sometimes, we love them. They may have been stronger, we may have been smarter, but together, for a moment in time, we were one. For a while, it worked. Two species, one Earth, crossing paths, sharing genes. But not everything was meant to last. For a while, it worked. Two species, one Earth, crossing paths, sharing genes. But not everything was meant to last. Because not long after these encounters, the Neanderthals began to disappear. Some say it was war, that Homo sapiens killed them off. Others say it was disease, famine, or infertility. But one of the most haunting theories? The sky turned black. Around 40,000 years ago, a chain of massive volcanic eruptions hit Europe and Western Asia. Explosions so powerful they blanketed entire regions in ash. No sun, no warmth, no food. Trees died, animals starved, entire ecosystems collapsed. And the Neanderthals, already small in number, couldn't recover. The most devastating of these eruptions was the Campanian Ignimbrite, near what is now Naples, Italy. Its ash clouds spread across thousands of kilometers. When scientists studied the soil layers from this time, they found no plant pollen, no signs of life, just ash and silence. Neanderthals were hunters, they needed big animals, but when the animals died, so did their chances. They had no long-distance networks, no farming, no advanced tools to adapt, meanwhile, Homo sapiens adapted. We moved, we migrated, we traded, shared, built shelters, used symbols, and passed knowledge faster, we survived. And yet, something strange happened. Even as Neanderthals vanished from the Earth, their Y chromosomes, the male lineage, were replaced by ours. We had children with Neanderthal women, so many in fact that their male line may have gone extinct. We became the dominant species but we didn't leave them behind, we carried them inside us. So no, the Neanderthals didn't just vanish, they were absorbed. And that's why when you look in the mirror, you're not just seeing a modern human, you're seeing a ghost from the past, one that walks with you every single day. You were never just you. Your story didn't begin with your parents or even your great-grandparents. It began in the frozen forests of Ice Age Europe, beside a fire, between two species. The Neanderthals are gone, their camps have vanished, their voices are silent, but somehow, they survived. In us. They gave us more than just DNA, they gave us strength, endurance, immunity, maybe even the stubbornness in your bones. Every time you feel the chill of winter but keep walking, every time your instincts kick in when something feels off, every time you wonder why you dream the way you do, they're there, echoes in your blood. So the next time someone says Neanderthals are extinct, smile, because part of them still walks this earth, inside you. This is Histavanes, where the past doesn't whisper, it screams. Subscribe for more hidden truths, forgotten bloodlines and history that lives.